5.7 focuses on meat production. We're going to talk about the methods and their benefits and drawbacks. Meat, unfortunately, is the least efficient type of agriculture. It takes about 20 times more land to produce the same amount of calories from meat as plants. And that's because they need um, either pasture or they need to have food grown for them. Uh, beef especially is the most energy intensive and it also produces the most greenhouse gases, um, particularly carbon dioxide and methane. Um, also, you'll need to know that industrialized nations eat the most meat because we're the ones that can afford it. <coughs> there are two main types of meat production. There's CAFOs, or concentrated animal feeding operations, otherwise known as feedlots, so either CAFOs or feedlots. Um, those probably see a lot, uh, those terms. Or factory farms, um, industrialized meat production. Those are all different terms that are thrown around to show this. So concentrated animal feeding operations. You have a lot of animals in a short or in a small um, area um, to maximize production. It is used as a way to quickly and cheaply get the livestock ready for slaughter. Um, it makes it cheaper also for the consumer. That's why we're able to have, you know, places like McDonald's and Burger King and all these other fast food restaurants that can get lots of beef very quickly. Uh, in fact, it was the um, McDonald's, like the rise of McDonald's and like that fast food aspect that um, that kind of gave birth to CAFOs. <coughs> I'm sorry. They're very crowded. Um, they also are fed grains because it fattens them up. Um, or feed, same thing. But their digestive system is not designed for that. They are designed to eat grass. Uh, and that's why it produces so much uh, methane because they get all messed up and then they have all this gas and they burp or fart it out. And it sounds funny, but it, it's a legitimate issue. They produce a lot of methane that way. And methane is 20 times worse um, per molecule than a molecule of carbon dioxide. So even if carbon dioxide is the dominant greenhouse gas uh, that's been produced by humans, methane is a significant issue as well. There is also a lot of organic waste that's created and that can contaminate ground and surface water. Um, it's a huge source of nitrates and phosphates and all that stuff. Another big issue with CAFOs is that they use a lot of antibiotics to um, cut down on diseases because when you have a lot of animals in a very small area, disease transmission is is very high. Um, so that's that's used to cut that down, but then that feeds into the antibiotic resistance issue that we have. Um, they are also given a lot of growth hormones because we want the cows and the chickens and the pork to be um, as fat as possible in this, the smallest time as possible. Um, and the growth hormones, there's a lot of research to show that's not a really good way of making your meat and then ingesting it. There are a lot of issues that come along with those as well. The alternative to CAFOs is free-range grazing, and that allows animals to graze on grass during their entire lifetime. There are different levels of uh, free-range um, that can be um, that's reflected in the label on the, your meat. Um, if you're interested, you can look up things like Certified Humane, and there's, I'm blanking on it right now, but there's like a level one, level two, level three types of certification um, that in order to get that label they have to demonstrate that animals are given certain conditions so they are free or tend to be free of the antibiotics and chemicals used in feedlots um, and it's kind of a, a systemic approach to creating food the organic waste acts as a fertilizer for the grass and then the grass grows and then that's used as a food source um, especially if you rotate the crops <laughs> to the grass, rotate the pastures, allow that fertilizer to act and allow that grass to grow as they're grazing on a different area of land that can cut that down, like overgrazing. Um, it does require a large area of land, and usually grassland, because that's what they use, grassland. Uh, and because it's, you know, more time-consuming, 
and does require more investment. It is more expensive to the consumers. For example, there's a, a farm near here that you can buy ground beef from, it's like eight ninety nine a pound versus, you know, your normal store-bought um, beef, and that's like four ninety nine a pound. And so it's a significant difference to the consumer. Uh, it's really hard to get consumers to buy into that, like, why would I get a bound beef for nine dollars when I can get it for five dollars? And so you've got to have that that buy-in. Like, is why is that worth it to them? Big issue with free-range grazing is overgrazing, which I just touched on a couple of slides ago on accident. But overgrazing occurs when you have too many animals feeding <clears throat> on a particular area of land and cause loss of vegetation. Anytime you have loss of vegetation, you get soil erosion because those roots aren't holding onto the soil as well, making that soil much more loose and vulnerable. And over time, overgrazing can cause desertification. So desertification is when it's past that point of being able to sustain vegetation anymore. And that area that already has low precipitation degrades to a point that it's become a desert, essentially a desert. So ways to... Um, Ways to improve the meat industry. Um, just maybe having a one day a week where you just don't eat meat. You know, it doesn't have to be like vegetarian or nothing. Uh, we can all have a significant impact just by having one day not eating meat. Because um, it can reduce greenhouse gases. There's carbon dioxide um, that also goes into the whole the whole thing from combustion, electricity, there's methane from livestock, nitrous oxide from synthetic fertilizers, um, it also conserves water and uh, reduces the use of antibiotics and growth hormones because there's less of a demand, um, and also improved topsoil, and oh, I thought I had more slides after that. Um, Okay, yeah, yeah, I guess that was it. So in summary, <laughs> describe different methods of meat production and their benefits and drawbacks.